Hello, neighbor. How you do it? Ah, it's so good to see you. It's so good to know you are listening to me right now. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. <music> Now, today's episode is short. Yes, I know, although I promised a long episode. But, oh gosh. Because this is being distributed to YouTube music and people don't quite know me yet, you know, like, they're not quite tuned into my stuff. I'm trying to keep anything I do 20 minutes, 30 minutes max until I'm better known in the industry before I can start, like, making lengthy podcast episodes. Now, continue where we left off in the last episode. We left off at the part that Charlotte aka Lottie right now in the tune in the new timeline she is having a nightmare of a day because this this new life she is supposedly a courtesan a woman of easy virtue a woman who doesn't mind doing the most scandalous things that even in modern times it is scandalous what more of those times when people were all prep and prim you understand and right now she wants her life to change to the other way but Quint's the supernatural being that granted her wish that gave her this new life does not tell her that. Although another supernatural being called Milton finds Quince and says, hey, you have to go tell that girl the truth, that she can reverse her wish, okay? But in the meantime, Charlotte has gotten swept up, like aka Lottie has gotten swept up by the person who is the reason why she made that wish in the first place, so bashed it. And he is supposed to be going for this dinner, this birthday party. That's supposed to be his engagement party, but he doesn't want to go because he wants to marry Lottie. But apparently Lottie has already told him, no, go ahead, marry the chit you want to marry. The Miss Buck girl. Talos is like, me asked you to marry that girl. How would I ever ask you to do that? But anyhow, we have already established that Charlotte and Lottie are two different people who happen to share a body. Okay, so right now, Charlotte is living Lottie's life. They're the one and the same person. Remember, just that she made a wish and right now she's getting only the part of the wish where the man she loves, loves her back. But everything else in her life is an, an author chaos. And part of that chaos is Sebastian now says, hey, I'm, let's spend a day together. And he's riding them in his carriage to a place that she supposedly loves. She has no idea where that place is yet. So that's where they're headed to. On that ride, she is so proper that Sebastian has to point out, you're turning into one of those bad nannies that my sisters run about with. All this little Trent nonsense. I'm fishing for compliments. I thought we were well past that. Like I said, Lottie is very different from Charlotte. Charlotte is a proper lady. Lottie has a mouth of a silo. Is like, has this devil may care attitude. She's that kind of woman. But Charlotte is not. There's also that part where Lottie tells Sebastian, I don't have any money. Sebastian gives her this incredulous look like, I've never known you not to have at least 50 pounds in that reticle of yours. You never know when you're going to run into your favorite bookmaker or a good game of dice. You always carry cash around because you tend to just indulge in gambling and stuff. Because right now, they're actually going to a track race event. This is apparently what Lottie, the kind of things Lottie likes. Charlotte is doubtful, but she goes ahead to check Lottie's reticle. Her reticle, okay? Charlotte, Lottie, same person we're talking about. I'm just going to stick to Lottie for now so that we know who we're speaking of. We know that we're in this timeline of her wish. So Lottie, she checks her, her reticle. And truly, there's money there. A word of cash that in her former lifeline, oh my gosh, it is a fortune. And that's what she's casually carrying around in her purse in this lifeline. And also, this track race event that they're headed to, Charlotte's mom, in the other lifeline, the other timeline, she would say that this event of the devil. But to Charlotte, to Lottie, who is here for the first time, but Sebastian, to him, she's been here lots of time, Lottie is thinking, oh my gosh, this place looks like a freaking carnival. It's so pretty. It's so scandalous to tempt it. And Sebastian just starts telling her, okay, Lottie, we're going to set the rules. Don't bet more than you can afford. And Lottie, she's trying to protest that she, oh God, I don't gamble. But already she finds herself drawn to this Arabian horse. And a voice in her head is now whispering, that one Lottie, my girl, he'll make you rich. Charlotte is the innocent part of Lottie, while Lottie is a scandalous part. They're both the same person. So now Charlotte quickly learns that being Lottie means she can order men around, hold them at her beck and call and be impolite. 
are discovering this instead of her feeling like oh what kind of woman is this she goes like oh that makes me feel powerful it also surprises her that sebastian is not trying to curtail her use of money more like saying give me your money i'm because you're going to spend instead he's like it's your money i won't tell you how to use your money but just make sure that you spend within reason and remember you had to cut down on your millinery visits for a month the last time you went better like millinery your visits to the seamstress because you spent too much on this thing so don't do that so lottie just replies i believe i have enough hats for this month she's trying to say even if i run into debt don't worry i will need to go to the millinery and to this sebastian laughs and is making lottie wonder how can this type of woman be the sort of woman sebastian malowi would love as well as suffice it to say most of the men of london love this type of woman a woman of loose morals a pen chart for all sorts of vice and apparently no manners why is it that men are into this type of woman they run into rockhurs remember the l and rockhurs has this faithful hound like a dog rowan that is always on his heels and now rowan is someone that he adores Lottie. He has his reputation of licking Lottie's feet. But today, he's barking and sneering at her as though he feels, as though this hound, this dog is sensing that this is not the real Lottie. You understand that this is an imposter. This is Charlotte come to steal Lottie's life. Only the dog knows and he's unfriendly and he's shocking to everybody because this dog adores Lottie on a normal day. And the Arabian that Lottie was initially drawn to, that Arabian horse that, was, that seemed to be whispering in her head, hey Lottie girl, bet on this one, it's going to make you rich. That Arabian happens to belong to Rock Horse. Rock Horse now, now tells Lottie to name the, the horse, the Arabian horse. He even ends up pulling Lottie away from Sebastian's side. Now, it's striking Charlotte at this point that the real Lottie would actually know what to do, how to play this game, but she is lost. But she tells herself the real Lottie would know what to do. And that serves as something that boosts her morale. So with that thought, she pulls Sebastian back to her side with a smile. And then confidently names the Arabian Boreas after the knotwood. And she bets the usual on him. She doesn't even know what the usual is because the person who's in charge of bet says, Hey, Lottie, are you going to bet the usual? And she says, Yeah, sure. <laughs> she has no idea what the usual is. But she's just kind of convinced that this Arabian is going to win, win this track race event. Is her betting apparently <laughs> the Lottie life is really catching on to her now? Most people bet on him too because apparently, whenever Lottie says, Hey, this thing is gonna win, most people follow suit. She's she's a trendsetter, okay? Mrs. Townsend's blessing, okay? Sebastian bets on the, the Arabian too, and Rockhurst is shocked, is shocked that Sebastian would bet because that's when it dawns on Lottie Charlotte that really. Mm, Sebastian's financial state is really bad. If that, if Rockhurst is shocked that he's going to bet on this event, like, are you sure? Is that wise? Are you? It's not going to hurt you. Now, together, three of them: Sebastian, Rockhurst, the L, and Mrs. Townsend. That's Lottie. It's three of them together. The spy is set a man approaching them. Rockhurst dives into the crowd first. His dog following him. Sebastian talks Lottie in the opposite direction, and she's not like okay when they're away from the man and everything she's now asking sebastian why are we avoiding the man sebastian now starts telling her that ah, that man he bought shares for useless ship and now that the ship is bound not to make profit he's trying to sell off those shares to the next unfortunate person that is a sink ship he's not going to come back the all those investments you buy ship that if it docks on England so you make a fortune. But the the ship is lost at sea. So the man is trying to at least salvage something, but everybody's not avoiding him. So they will not buy the shares. Now the process of conversation, it has lots his heart fluttering because Sebastian is such he's at such close range with her and she's quivering with desire. And Sebastian is also looking at her with heat in his eyes. And he now says Okay, come on, I'm gonna feed you. So he ends up buying them a basket of food, a pure-fast blanket and wine from Rockhurst's carriage, and then suddenly it's a picnic on grass. You know, this is the kind of tales romance is born out of. You know, the kind of man that can just create picnic out of thin air and make you have a grand time, even though you're on a few feet. Track race event ground, you know. And she's just feeling so satisfied when they're done eating and she's relaxing. And he now says, really? You're satisfied by this? You don't mind that I pulled you from your usual pleasures? 
she does not know what the usual pleasures is right now charles is having an adventure as lotti and it's like i don't know what, what my usual pleasures are but this is like pretty okay for me okay? well he now goes to explain that her usual pleasures include things like dice races cards boxing she's like oh heavens no he now said heavens no you are saying heavens no you sound like one of my spinster sisters sebastian is saying where's my salty gel my plain spoken dotty he now feigns his exaggerated pose his hand thrown back on his forehead and his voice rising in this falsetto damn it to hell trent if i want to dice my garters away it's none of your bloody concern charles starts laughing because he is imitating the usual lotty and charles is saying it as funny because she's like wait yo this woman that i'm supposed to be is like this yo she's like i would never say such a thing he's not like yes i, I suppose not it was missing at, at least one more profanity and at least two obscenities he's saying that he even gave a watered down fashion of how lotty normally talks oh my gosh her mouth must be so dirty <laughs> Now Lali starts now asking, so are you you're saying that I would never do anything that would shock you? He now replies, Lot Lottie, nothing you could ever say would shock me. I love everything about you. And this confession takes her back. Because she's really been doubted. Did Quincy's wish make this man truly love me? And she's seeing the signs that Sebastian is mad about her. And that he loves this Lottie woman despite her penchant for gambling, for her own ladylike vocabulary. Loved her despite the fact that nearly every man in London knew what she looked like in her. Mm -hmm. Loved her utterly and completely. What? You understand? So Sebastian now goes on to bet that there is nothing Lottie can say that would shock him. And she now starts telling him, well, I have this one desire, you know. And this is a desire she's never ever voiced on other lifeline. And it takes her time to plot it out. And when she does, she just says, I want to see Lord Trammell's Gracian statues at the museum. Uh, Sebastian is actually shocked because he was not expecting to hear that. He's like, okay, I'll pay up. Okay, you, you lost me on this one. I lost the wager, but not today because I've sunk everything I have on the Arabian. And if that doesn't go well, I'll have no choice but to. He doesn't complete that statement, but we know. If this bet on the Arabian host does not go well, he's going to have to marry Miss Buck. And it's all because Lottie is dead set on... He doesn't complete what Lottie is dead set on doing. That makes him to be forced in the position of having to marry Miss Buck. She was actually going to complete the statement. But you know when a race event starts and that pium goes off to, to show that the race has started. So it sends both of them running to go and see what's going to be the outcome of this race because they betted on it. So people are blocking the view of the racing horses. They, they can't even see what's happening when they get to the racing ground like where the horses are currently racing because a lot of people are standing they're trying to see oh the horse i betted on is that running the rest now sebastian ha grabs lottie by the way sets her one of the kegs in there are kegs there so she's now watching with her heart in her throat and then the race ends she is so speechless at the outcome and then with joy she hugs sebastian the one the Arabian that she betted on won. And they kiss shamelessly, regardless of the people around them. They go on to dance a jig and they have a grand time. He returns her home on Little Titchfield Street. Lottie's home is grand with flower pots at every window that is flat in between them when he wants to leave. Lottie would normally ask him to walk out to the door. She would ask for a kiss, which would turn to more. So it makes him worry when she's flatty. He now said in a serious tone, Why do you do this, Lottie? Do what? Spend all day convincing me that you are utterly and completely in love with me. But I... He now waved off her protests. He now says, And then in two days time, you'll be pelting me with your pretty little shoes, calling me all sorts of vulgar names, and tossing me out your door. Charlotte is like, I wouldn't do that. Like, Lottie, I, I wouldn't toss you out of the door. So he, all he does is he just kisses her soundly and he's off. Trying to say, I'm not going to fall for your spells. I'm not going to fall for your shenanigans today. And she has no idea what those shenanigans seemingly are, except what he's telling her. Again, living a life that everybody expects you, that you're one thing, and you don't even have any memories of that. That must be so freaking weird, every second. Now, inside of the house, Finella is so dismayed to learn that Lottie went gambling again until Lottie reveals that she won 800 pounds. I live in Nigeria, and one pound is about 2,000 naira or so. So, 2,000 times 800, that is a very rich amount of money if you gave me that money right now you can start up a business for me like a pretty successful business and this is the 1830s mm. 
And we know that money then was like, mm. So Lottie can gamble. And Lottie made a very big win, okay? Now, Fenella reveals Lottie has been with Trent for more than a year and is dwindling her income. Like, oh yeah, sure, you made good money today. That's fine. But this guy you've been with, Trent, you've been with him for a year and it's not doing any good for your income. You need a new a new man. You need a chess Sam, a man who can leave properties and wealth for you. Now, it's time for the evening opera. Lottie, she dresses so lavishly. She's in her lavish private bus that a chess Sam, one of her chess Sams, you know, the, her man benefactors paid a subscription for and died and the subscription is you getting paid. So the, this is the goal of every mistress. Get a rich man that will pay you even after he's dead. Now, in the box that she is in, her private box at the opera, next to her box is that of Lord Pilsey and Lady Pilsey. Lady Pilsey, her mother. And her mother openly shunned her, wouldn't even look in her direction. And this brings tears to Charlotte's eyes, you know, because in her heart, she still sought her to Charlotte. I mean, although she's naughty. Now, in both timelines, her mother is consistent in being cold to her. Because even in the other timeline, her mother is always full of disapproval. In this one too, she's scorning her. You get? So her mother is one consistent thing in both timelines. Lord Rockhurst joins Lottie in her books because apparently he's at date for the evening. But while they are there together, Lord Rockhurst and Lottie, and Lord Rockhurst is in this form-fitting clothes, you know, handsome English lord kind of vibes, Lottie is noticing him because Finella earlier made comments about Rockhurst and said, Come on, why don't you just take Rockhurst as your lover instead? I mean, the last woman that was his mistress told me all about his endowment. You you understand? Like, when they say endowment and man, you know, her eyes are not like traveling down. And she's like, oh, oh my gosh, my gosh, don't get curious about that. Don't get curious about that, Charlotte. And when he notices her eyes journey, she glances away. Now, across her box, she sees Sebastian with Miss Buck. Even in this lifeline, this timeline of events, Miss Buck is still pretty, polished, perfectness. And at words, insecurities flood Lottie. I mean, she's meant to be the hot courtesan that all men want. But look at the love of her life. See that across from her box with a proper woman. Inside of her, she still feels like that poor, overlooked spinster. Not like this powerful Lottie that has men at her beck and call. So some things inside are the same. Not some things, most things. Because her entire life changed. But somehow she's the one thing that is still unchanged. Rockhurst and Lottie are engaging in conversation while they are there in the opera box. And Rockhurst is now calling Lottie cynical. And says that if he didn't know better, he thinks that Lottie is in love with Sebastian. Because Lottie, the actual Lottie is a cynical person. But this is Charlotte living Lottie's life and she is not cynical. But everybody thinks she is, okay? She doesn't bother telling Rockhurst that, yeah, well, you got the wrong girl. She just lets him keep talking. So... Lottie's attention is still focused on Sebastian, who's a chorus from her, where, with Miss Buck. So she's just staring at him. And in her mind, she's like, Sebastian, please look at me. Look at me. And just with that one thought, it seemed as though Sebastian heard her thoughts. And instantly, his eyes met hers. And it sets off a chain of seduction. Because he starts by brushing off imaginary flames from his breast. And it feels like he's caressing her own. On and on it goes with memories of a lovemaking she did not partake of flooding her mind. And it makes her gasp. Because why am I having memories of something that I did not do with this man? But apparently I did. But I didn't do. You know, that confusion. She thought his love would be a kind regard and orange blossoms. That was the idea in the former lifeline. Oh, lovely man. Like Sebastian, you know, it's all cherry pops. Give me flowers. But love means abiding passion that rises between a man and a woman when they share each other's thoughts, choices, their very desires. Now, Miss Buck notices from beside Sebastian the intensity that Sebastian is staring at Lottie with, you know, the sizzling thing happening. So she now gives Lottie this very angry look and grabs Sebastian's arm in a way that says he'll be mine completely. And inside, Lottie's trashing it back. It's just trashing, trashing his eye and saying, never. You know, she understands what Quince meant that she needs to do. Like, it finally sinks to her right now what she needs to do. Where Sebastian is concerned. She has to let Sebastian love her. She has to love him back. Heart, soul, body. Now, 
after the opera event. She's at home, she's pacing, she's awaiting Sebastian, and she's even at a loss of what, on what to do if it comes onto her. Because, come on, Charlotte is a virgin. I mean, Lorty is an easy woman, but Charlotte is a virgin. Okay. And she's meant to be playing the role of a courtesan, an experienced courtesan. So, right there, she's there. Her maid Prudence comes in to check on her. And she now hears sweet violin music. She, she now asks, oh, where is that coming from? And her, the maid Prudence feels like, oh, is that German player next door that you asked me to keep feeding? He, he plays the music for you in exchange for the meals you give him. Oh, okay. Now, Sebastian arrives at her house and... They start by dancing to that music that a German player next door is playing. And the way Sebastian takes his time, you know, romances Lottie, they dance, their eye gazes meet. It's all slow. It's all not in a hurry. And the gradual progression is not making her think, oh, I shouldn't have worried. I mean, it's not like he's jumping me, okay? Before she knows it, they're up the stairs. He's a stunned up. And when they're done, he tells her, I love you, Lottie. And she replies, and are you Sebastian? She whispers back, are you? Like, I love you. Are you? <laughs> this reminds me of the Korean singer. They engage in a bear talk, Sebastian and Lottie. And he's not telling her, um, you know, when we were in doing the, you know, th there was this part where I slid into you and you looked so innocent and surprised. And that was a weird look. You know, I've never seen that on your face before. Lottie, I think something has come over you because you're different all of a sudden. They move on from that conversation and then Sebastian now asks Lottie, what's your wish? She cups his face, like cradles his face in her, in her hands and says, I have you and that is all I could ever want. And when she says this, <laughs> Uncle is like, what? Uh, you, uh, what? Mm, since when? You know, since when did you think that I'm enough for you? His expression is shocked. He's triple shocked that she actually means what she said. She, she now starts asking, but what about the last few weeks? I thought you were... She just tells him, Sebastian, forget anything about the last few weeks. Everything you thought about me. I am different. I'm all for you right now, okay? So now, the next day, the following day, Charlotte has this lazy day in mind prepared, you know, when she has to be with Sebastian. But he has to attend to other business, which is actually Miss Brooke. Now, she's to be ready by 11 p.m. That's what Sebastian tells her, because he has an edifying night in mind. Now, Fenella and Charlotte, they go shopping and she takes her time to look good for Sebastian. Now, 11 p.m. comes and Sebastian doesn't show up. And she is never, she is pacing and pacing and pacing the floor. And Sebastian does not show up until past 1 a.m. in the morning. It is freaking past midnight. And the call she applied around her eyes, it looks like caterpillars down her cheeks. And she's wiping it when he shows up because she's crying, thinking he's not going to come to see her. And he's dressed in black as a highwayman. He says, oh, what shoes are you wearing? Nah, -uh. that's not the shoes we need to be doing what we have to do this night. He now borrows Prudence's boots and says that this, that this is the sensible shoes you need to wear this night for where we're going to. Lottie looks at the boots with disgust. I mean, she's already getting used to the Lottie life, Charlotte, for her to look at Prudence's boots with disgust, like the maid's boots. Boots that she has to borrow for where Sebastian has in mind because why is he dressed in black like a highwayman? Where are they going to at 1 a.m. in the night? Okay, he sweeps her up in his arms and into the carriage. She thinks he is mad. London is asleep, but then you know, the fact that she's a Sebastian, this whole thing seems charming. Okay, now this night is about fulfilling Charlotte's secret desires. That's what Sebastian tells her. He now brings her to the museum. You know, she told him earlier that her dream that she wishes to see Lord Gresham's statues, marble statues. You know, those are the statues that in the other timeline, um, Sebastian's mother, Hermione and others, they've gone to see it, you know, because in the other lifeline, his family is not proper. And Charlotte was just jealous of Hermione for having seen these things at the museum. So right now that she has this opportunity in this timeline, she's taking advantage of it. They go in through a back way entry. Apparently, Sebastian got the guards drunk and he bribed one. So now they enter and it's all dark and it looks like you're sneaking around. Makes it all more like, ooh, adventure. Now, inside the museum, there are Greek gods and goddesses. Mount Olympus vibes. Lottie gets in trout. She's looking up at this on this unclad figure of a goddess. Sebastian now says, I want to paint you like that. And she's like, you paint? Because in the other timeline, she did not know he paints. His family doesn't even know he paints. Even now, he tells her that his family does not know he paints. And even 
Lottie doesn't know he paints. So this is even the first time that Sebastian is revealing to anybody. Because painting is something he does in private. It's not even something that his mother knows. Because if she knows that in the other timeline, she should have been rejoicing that it's something about my son. My serious son is artistic. But nobody knows this. And it's making Charlotte, Lottie, feel proud that, hmm, I just saw a part of Sebastian, painter Sebastian, that not even Lottie knows, okay? This is a part that has been kind of sp- saved, you know, preserved, that only Charlotte and me will discover. Now, everything looks like it's going so good. She's in love. Everything is working out. But <laughs> things are about to get like, okay, they're about to get not too pleasant. Now we're going to continue from the next episode and drama, come ready to feel the drama is going to, the next episode is going to be live on Monday and then we'll try to finish between like within next week and next up our week we'll finish the story so we can move on to a new one. Thanks so much for listening to this ending and if it seems like this part was rushed, I really apologize. I, I really hope it doesn't take away the storytelling experience regardless, I would do better. Honestly, I'll do better with every episode, every production. Thank you for giving me this chance that you listen to me. Please share the podcast, leave a rating, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. God bless you. I love you.